Have you ever bought or... This is Dave's Video Graveyard with Polly and Dave. It is Dave's Video Graveyard YouTube edition. Today I'm joined by three of the four awesome guys from Toy Power Podcast. We've got Ben, Yo. Trent, Boo. and Frank. Hey all. You can check those guys out on Stitcher and iTunes and a few adult sites that uh, <laughs> Frank doesn't like to tell people about. It only, happened, it only happened once. That was a good one. <laughs> So this week we are doing a bit of a late review, which is why it's going to be absolutely spoiler filled like the back of a car. We are talking all about Deadpool 2. Guys, what did you do this thing? I thought it was really cool. Um, I have to uh, start off by saying I still think the first one's better. Uh, I, yeah, I know that's a bit controversial, but I wanted to um, shout it out because it's just my personal opinion. Uh, I, I um, knew Cable was going to be awesome in the film. Uh, I, I went in knowing that, but the big surprise for me <clears throat> was Domino. Domino is now oh, uh, uh, like she was so foxy. Every yeah. every scene she owned it. Uh, her, she, um, she was what Beyonce wishes she exactly, was in Golden exactly, Hours. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Like her superpower per se, the way they um, you know in instrumented it, it was just beautiful. It was so just so well executed and uh, I just uh, lapped it up. I thought she was fantastic. For those who haven't seen the film, the one thing I liked about Domino's power, obviously she has the power of luck being on her side. I was really wondering how they're going to convey that because in comics it's quite easy to convey mm. um, and I love what they've done. They've basically gone the final destination route so her luck sets up a lot of events in her life Final Destination style that quite often either ends up with her not getting hurt or her enemies getting hurt. A domino effect. Mm. Oh, mm. that's deep. Like what yeah. You did. <laughs> yeah, for me, my favourite part of the film was the assembly and then rapid disassembly of the X Force <laughs> and introducing Domino's powers yes. in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, the fact that someone even calls it while they're on the plane. You know, this is a bit choppy. It's a bit windy out here. Deadpool was like, "It's fine," and then that there's moment, a high wind warning yeah. in effect. <laughs> <laughs> the moment where he looks up and they're all just spinning out of control, and you go, "Oh, I know exactly how this is going to play out," and it just plays out brilliantly. I was expecting them to tangle together and all drop as one, but what happens is Deadpool assembles. A, he puts an ad out uh, through Weasel looking for a new X Force team. Uh, he ends up getting uh, Terry Crews playing yep. Bedlam, is it? Yeah, Bedlam. Bedlam. Yep. 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 Bedlam uh, you get It, Pennywise from the new It. I'm totally forgetting his name right now. Skarsgård. Yeah. Uh, he plays Zygus? Zygus, Zygeist, who spits acid. Uh, you get Peter, who's a chubby, out-of-work actor, <laughs> that basically just looking for some fun. And there's a joke that's played for like a few sight gags that there's a... Um, a character called the Vanisher and he's completely invisible and they don't actually know if he's in the room half the time we get to see like a parachute sitting unmanned just sitting up on its own and the the jokes played as if Vanisher's not there the X-Force team jump out of the basically the drop ship uh, and the winds pick them up and they all get carried Terry Crews ends up straight in the front of a moving bus um, we get Zeitgeist lands in a wood chipper <laughs> which is <laughs> awesome and we also, uh, Domino easily lands, like she Safety, does, yeah. she follows the convoy they're trying to land on. And Shatterstar. Shatterstar lands in the <laughs> propellers of a helicopter that's taking off. And uh, Peter, the, the no um, superheroes guy, he lands down kind of okay. And then we get, we see the Vanishes parachute is open and spinning out of control. But at this point, you're pretty sure it's just an empty parachute. <laughs> at which point, <laughs> the parachute hits the power lines. Instantly, we quickly see for about one second Brad Pitt. Yep. And then he dies. So, uh, pretty much X-Force dies within two minutes of them starting their mission. Other than Domino and Deadpool. Um, there's so much I loved about this film. It's 
it's just as funny and just as dirty as the first one. The only thing I will say is it's not as sexual as the first one. Like, yeah. I could actually get away yeah. with taking my kid to this one and not have to cover his eyes, you know, because the gore is no different than a lot of the action movies and stuff. However, the uh, there's no sex montage in this one, so well, that's probably Ryan a Reynolds moment. was uh, naked in the first one as well. When yeah, he, when he got, gets got off a the, uh, Yeah, so in saying that, you yeah. do get to see Baby Dick in this one. Yeah, yeah there's Baby Dick, <laughs> there's, uh, and there's big hairy man. And one of the other big <laughs> X Men that show up in this movie is the Juggernaut, and uh, basically, after a confrontation with Deadpool, he tears Deadpool in half uh, by the waist. And then we're treated to probably one of the greatest scenes that every other, everyone else yeah. in the scene is playing it straight. Deadpool is basically sitting on the um, the lounge while his legs grow back. At this point, they're basically the size of a toddler's. And he's, as Weasel says it, he's shirt cocking it for the whole scene. <laughs> so he's just naked from the waist down while his legs grow back. And Doing the Winnie the Pooh style. There yeah. is, there, basically, Cable does a big speech and you know, gets Deadpool to side with him, at which point we are treated to Deadpool standing on his toddler legs and shaking his hand in what's played as, like, a hero moment of motivation. And I just thought it was so fucking good. Uh, what else stood out for you guys? Well, that that's funny you mentioned that scene because that, that was my instant favourite, you know, and, and the bit he's got his legs crossed for most <laughs> yeah, of it, and then there's just this tiny, and you go, yeah. oh, and I think even um, TJ Miller calls it out when he goes, oh, just basic instinct, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and it was, yeah, that, that scene is meant to be, all right, Cable and Deadpool teaming up for the first time, which they're quite an iconic duo, and the whole seriousness, and, you know, you've got to give me 30 seconds to, to save this kid was all undercut by the fact that he was standing on, you know, a two-year-old's leg sort of thing. <laughs> so, very classic Deadpool. Yeah. Um, it was quite... It was going to be different than the first, no matter what. Um, I went into it expecting Empire Strikes Back level of sequel, and it got pretty damn close, in my opinion. Um, the biggest thing being that the first film centred purely on Deadpool and his revenge story. You also, you had Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead as part of his team. This time there's a lot more characters, so it's kind of spread around a lot more. But I think it still worked. Um, I agree with Ben, it does have a little bit of a different feel. Um, I just love the the meta humour that this franchise is allowed to get away with is fantastic. I love a lot of the fanboys were cramming themselves over the fact that Deadpool dons the grey uh, yeah, yeah, X-Force yeah. yeah. outfit. Yep. which you actually find out later that he's just been hit with a fireball. <laughs> he's covered in soot and ash. Yep. Um, there's a lot of interlying stories that play out throughout this one, one being basically Terminator 2, with Cable travelling back in time to kill the person that killed his family while he's a child. Um, we get the Juggernaut helping the child escape from what's called the Icebox, which is a, a somewhat infamous Canadian um, prison for mutants. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of really cool stuff. I'm a bit of a um, tourist when it comes to comic books, so I really appreciated so much of it because it's almost hand-fed to you. Um, the first one had a lot of the best lines in the trailer, I found. Yep. Like, That's by fair. the time you saw it, all the one-liners that are in the trailer are in the movie. This time, they were quite clever in the fact that I feel they changed a lot of the one-liners that are actually made it into the film. Uh, there's so many pop culture references, digs at other things, such as um, Deadpool saying to Cable, you're so dark, you should be from yep. the DC yep. Universe. Uh, also proclaiming his Batman when Cable asks who he is. Um, well, even the fact that Josh Brolin, I think, is 5 foot 11, and in the comics, uh, Cable is quite yeah. big. Yeah. And when Deadpool is explaining the plan, he's saying, and don't look for a big guy, he's actually a little guy. Yeah. He's five foot eleven. He's <laughs> not like in the not comics. Not like in the comics. Yeah. And even the, the bit where they're, they're foreshadowing Juggernaut, there's the, the jail cell, they keep the most dangerous prisoner in there, and he looks to camera and goes, there's a bit of foreshadowing going on. Like, he's literally calling out what they're doing. Like, no other film can really get away with that, just about. Um, I really love just the little things. Like, it's... Ryan Reynolds has a grasp of com comedy where he basically makes a film that would make him laugh, and I think that comes across. Mm. TJ Miller also has a similar approach, but being that he's basically been labelled a sex pest <laughs> and also phoned in a bomb threat, yeah. which is pretty much yeah. a, an act of terrorism, he got cut back very much for this film. Definitely. But 
what I really love is the likes of just little things that are... I feel like this is a movie you could watch again and you'll pick up on a lot of jokes you missed. Oh, yeah. I loved when, after Deadpool's grown his legs back and he's fighting again, for the rest of the film, his suit is held together by a silver gaffer tape. So there's a lot of cameos in Deadpool 2 that I really enjoyed. Uh, you get Matt Damon, who I will admit I did not know no, was Matt Damon at the time. No. Him and Alan Tudyk, because I don't know how to pronounce his last name, and essentially that's how it's spelled. Yeah. Yep. So they're both in it. Uh, well, that's what I was talking about. Deadpool's at the mansion, and uh, while he's walking through, he's talking about how there's never any other X-Men there. And uh, we're then treated to a cameo from uh, Quicksilver, um, Beast. Nicholas Holt, yeah. and James uh, McAvoy, James McAvoy yeah. uh, there, and they quickly shut the door before Deadpool notices they're there. Um, when it comes to uh, visual effects, they're absolutely flawless. Nothing stood out in the way that um, Mark Ruffalo's stupid fucking head did in <laughs> Infinity War. Yeah, I'm um, going to call that, just on that, juggernaut, you'd see through his um, mask and his face, like his his lips and his mouth were like so enormous. It is played yeah, as if like, his Ugh. head's the shape of the helmet, which yeah. was never, <laughs> <laughs> never the case. Um, that is Ryan Reynolds. It is Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Like, I did yeah, not know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it just, um, it just like, whoa, like it's... I just said, that's Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. <laughs> no, 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 Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. Fuck. Well, that was one of, the best, one of the best lines from the first outtake. My stuntman's going to fuck you up. <laughs> um, I really loved the visual effects of... Th this is a weird little thing that stood out to me. All the scenes in Colossus's metal arms, um, they basically, every time you moved a muscle... Yeah, the sound. They would... It kind of conveyed the movement of each individual right. thing, Bicep. which that yeah. stood out to me. Um, he even so called it, didn't he? A big CGI fight between Juggernaut yep. and um, Colossus. Well, that's essentially yeah. why the, Juggernaut yeah. would have been in the film, because who's Colossus going to go up against? Like, the, the headmaster yeah. of the school? Too easy. Like... Yeah. yeah. Um, and the young... I can't think of his name right now, so awesome. I'll use my mind. To write the actor's name down the bottom right now. Ready? Ah, oh, there it is. Read it. See, guys, you'll see it. Cool. Um, he was fantastic as uh, Fire Fist, who the joke is played upon a few times. Um, and also, we're treated to the death of Deadpool's Mrs. Vanessa, which is played as a very serious part of the film. I still feel that it was played in a weird way. Um, basically, She's killed by an assassin that Deadpool was trying to kill and uh, he basically kills the guy that kills him and then he goes into a deep, dark depression at which point he decides he's going to end it all with some barrels of jet fuel where then uh, we're treated to a, a basically a suicide scene played for laughs which it's as weird to say as it is to see. We never saw the growth, the baby growth back from his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where does he yeah. grow yeah. from? Because well, he was yeah, all yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Does he have a stockpile of legs somewhere? There must like, be. Yeah. And, and Colossus dragged him away in a duffel bag. like uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, the next day he was fine. So I felt almost like he healed back together. Yeah, for back. Yeah. Um, well, the opening theme blew my mind because I absolutely loved that Celine oh, Dion wow. song yeah. before it. But then we're treated to basically a James Bond-esque opening scroll um, with all the different Deadpools, like, you know, kaleidoscoping and stuff. Um, what else haven't we touched on? Josh Brolin is fantastic, and this is the best movie he's been in for the year, for sure. Yep. Nothing else comes close, financially or critically. Um, what did you he guys even, think? even called him Thanos in <laughs> yeah. the, in the uh, well, film. And, and One-Eyed Willy... Which That's is a, a reference, reference to is, is it Goonies. Yeah, okay. yes. a very young Josh Brolin. Well, he plays was... a pirate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, as he well as that. all the Barbara Streisand references, which he even calls out that Yentl basically is has been stolen from Frozen's. Uh, Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> yes. Which, yes. funnily enough, <laughs> Josh Brolin is the stepson of Barbara Streisand. So oh, there you a, go. There's <laughs> some more meta humor. Um, what about post credit scenes? Okay, yeah, so cool. this is, you'll see in every review of this film, the greatest mid credit sequence in the history of Marvel films. Agreed. Yep. Um, basically, one of you guys want to tell it? Well, the, the first one is obviously a reference back to Wolverine Origins, yep. where you know Ryan Reynolds has always been a huge Deadpool fan, and he would have fought tooth and nail to get that version of Deadpool, which was unfortunately... A, a craptacular version of the character. It culminates in essentially a 
shirtless, bald, mountain red. The Merc with a mouth. The Merc with a mouth. Merc without a mouth. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. now that uh, uh, current Deadpool has yeah. the time travelling device, yeah. he basically goes back in time to the scene where Hugh Jackman as Wolverine confronts the crappy Deadpool, and new Deadpool just blows him away yeah. and just keeps shooting yeah. Yeah. caps in. Sorry, just <laughs> fixing up continuity. Yeah, whilst they cut to a, like a, a horribly looking Hugh Jackman, like just the visuals from no, it. No, no, that's what, true. No, no, so what it is, it's cut from, from the film, yeah, what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is, basically it's the footage from X-Men Origins. What yeah. they've done is a thing called pan and scan where they slightly offset the angle. So it is still, right. but the grain is definitely the there, there. Of yeah. zooming in too far. Yeah. And it looks I've, great though. I, I think that makes it so yeah. good. I actually found it funny because there's also, um, to tie it together, there's a scene of Wolverine's claw with Deadpool in the background talking. So to tie it together, yeah. what I thought was really funny was like it's a hairless, like muscly hand. It's like Hugh Jackman looks like you know Bigfoot's dick. He's very ass. <laughs> yeah. So it was clearly a standing hand. Yeah. But I also feel it was like a dig at um, X Men Apocalypse when I don't know if you remember the teaser trailer, but it just showed Wolverine's hand. Yes. Yeah. Near the end. Yeah. Uh, that's what I forgot. The opening okay. scene basically Deadpool says fuck Wolverine for being jumping on my coattails of an R-rated comic book, but yeah. then outdoing me by killing dying, the dying. main character. Yes. Yeah. Spoiler alert for uh, Logan. But uh, it's just done so well, everything mm. about it. I loved it. You get the little diorama toy at the first, which I hope you can buy that. Oh, because I Someone need better make that. Of the dead Logan at the start. Yeah. Um, just mm. everything's done so well. I'm totally in love with Domino, and if this yeah. was... 1994, I'd objectify the shit out of her, but we've learnt better in 2018. Oh, she's just so fancy. When I can time travel, I will tell you what I really think in about 1997. Yeah. The other the other post credits one is of course uh, Deadpool going back in time. You're seeing uh, Ryan Reynolds reading the script of the original Green Lantern film. I love. I love. Oh, he had the cheesy American Pie spiky gel hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they made it look like it young looked, Ryan Reynolds. He had the and stubble. Yeah, he's finished reading the script and he looks to camera and goes, "Welcome to the big leagues." Yeah, 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 yeah. And then bang, his his. Black brains are blown out all over the page because Deadpool's just come up behind him and just capped him. <laughs> He's like, nope, I've got to fix that continuity error as well. <laughs> so, I just love the handling. There was, I, I agree with what Ben's saying, something felt different and not necessarily a positive different. Like, it was a great no, film, for, but for, it just wasn't as good as the first. For me, personally, I felt the storyline was a bit clunky. Um, like, and, I, and there's no other way I can really describe how I felt. It just felt clunky. I really didn't like that that kid, Fire Fire, Fire Hand Fist. or whatever his name was. He just I just could not give two crap two hoots about him. Like I just wanted Cable just to pop him off and let's just see the X Force and things. Like I really had no feelings at all for that kid. I'm sorry, but um, he just he just did not like. There was no care. At the, th all. the thing I like um, different about the Deadpool yeah. universe in the films is Deadpool's the only one kind of in danger. You know, we're not talking Avengers and shit here where the entire world's in peril and, yeah. you know, something yeah. bad's yeah. going to happen. Um, it's just, yeah, it's Deadpool's little story. Cable's really awesome and he's yeah. coming back, but I kind of feel that Josh Brolin would probably get pretty sick of it pretty quick because he seems like a bit of a cock face in <laughs> real life. Um, I even found a lot of the press that he did surrounding it. Um, I felt really forced. It felt like a... Felt like a stern old teacher trying to fit in with like the cool kid for a lot of the press that I saw. I likened it to Anthony Hopkins when he was doing press for the, the, the Transformer. latest Transformers movie. <laughs> yes. He just looked out of place. He's trying to say all the right things and sell it to you, but you go, I love you, Anthony Hopkins, but I'm yeah. not buying it. Like, he has, uh, Brolin has the whole Tommy Lee Jones, I'm happy to be here vibe. <laughs> <Yes>. like, <laughs> I know you're saying that, but it's just nah. not thing. But honestly, uh, I liken it to Jim Carrey's 1994 with the mask, Ace Ventura, and uh, Dumb and Dumber. It's everywhere. Basically, Brolin's got Mayville's Avengers <laughs> Finity War, I think it's called. I think it's French, but yeah. it's a small independent art house film that not many people would have yeah, seen. I so yeah, really? until this talk. If you get yeah. a chance, check that one out. You probably will have a hard time, hard time finding it. 
It's about gloves. So, so. just uh, just on um, uh, character wise, um, what did we think of the fact that um, Megasonic Teenage Warhead was sort of now this film a background character? Like she didn't. She I think did one somebody thing, had to. I mean, I, yeah. that many other characters, somebody yeah. had to suffer, and unfortunately, it was her. I thought she was a great mm. part no, of the first. Well, let's let's, let's face it. In the first one, maybe Colossus uh, and uh, Teenage Warhead. Yeah. Shared a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. time, Colossus gets maybe ninety percent to yeah. her ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like the awkward, girlfriend? unspoken oh. sexual uh, her girlfriend thing. Yeah. Where, How am I doing? It's just this uncomfortable. Like, what is going on? Fan girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah. that that like, don't talk to him. You know? yeah. like, <laughs> to your two point about Russell though, like. I thought he was at his best. He's known for, if you've seen some of his other work in Hunt for the Wilder People, Great he, he's known for his awkward, that awkward New Zealand humour that they do yeah. really yes. well. Yeah. I thought he was at his worst when he tried to do the, I'm really angry yeah. and I'm oh, going to kill yeah. this guy. When, and grr, like when he, he said, just yeah. didn't sell it. When he no. said, fuck, it feels good to be gangster. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, that Ooh. was, that felt really. Is he going to have a no fear sticker but, on yeah. as well? Like, you, you, <laughs> nailed, you nailed the way the New Zealand, because well, it's very similar to the Oz obviously wear louder fuckwits than they are but the awkwardness doesn't come across in an American thing and a good example would be to check out the interview with that actor on Jimmy Kimmel just okay. very recently yeah, yeah. because he's telling all these anecdotes that are light hearted jokes and Jimmy's believing he like, thinks you know, it's a real yeah, story yeah he's like oh okay and he's like no no not really <laughs> and it, it, there was kind of yeah. this divide um, funny fact is he's 15 years old in real life 15. and he's not allowed to see Deadpool 2 oh, oh, wow. Wow. wow he was allowed to MC and introduce a whole heap oh wow and had and to could now go sit in the corner <laughs> <laughs> because you can buy guns easy but don't yeah. watch violent movies yeah. kids America mm. so was there anything else that really stood out I I can't I rub my boner hard enough against this <laughs> film, but back to your point with the first Domino? and the second. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah so back to Google. Rubbing boners and all. Like, yeah. Back sorry. to Google Image yeah. Domino. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Call me. Basically, <laughs> back to your point, I feel yeah. it's the issue I have with so many sequels. I had it with the first Kingsman film yeah. with the second one. You see the first film with no expectation yes. at all. Oh, same, with, same with Guardians 100%. 2. Yeah. I yeah. loved Guardians Volume oh, yeah. 2 so much, yeah. but I also expected so yeah. much, so it was a yeah. weird thing. Yeah. I think perception yeah. and um, your yeah. own perspective yeah. is a big part of yeah. the sequels. Because this didn't disappoint in any no. way, but there was that weird feeling yeah. from the first uh, one. You, no, you totally nailed it. I, I went into the first one thinking they can't they can't do this, they can't they'll never do that. But they did. They did everything that I mm. anticipated that no film no comic book film would ever do. So that blew me away. Whereas this this one, you know, I, I you know, before when, when they showed Deadpool sitting on the lounge and um ready to pan past his baby legs. Sure, I, I yeah. <laughs> I predicted that. Like I, I, I yeah. predicted that that oh, he's gonna have baby legs, and then it bam. Yeah. So that 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 instant yeah. humor was taken away from me because it was I found yeah, it predictable. Sequel. But that's you know? the reality yeah. of the you've learned from the yeah. first. Yeah. True, yeah. but that but that's why I feel the first one is better. Mm. Plus it 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 was more focused on Deadpool, and this one tried to add so many other characters in it that characters like Russell and things that I really couldn't give two hoots about. That I you know took away from the overall. Um, polished film and if you read the behind the story side of things the original director from the first film mm. actually left this movie yeah. because of the budget. because not all also because what this film wanted to be yeah. mm. and that really worried me and even it, the movie starts to establish because we already know who Deadpool is the movie starts with pretty much a montage of him carrying out really cool hits fighting you Yuk yakuza um Mafia. I really liked him yeah. killing a mafia guy by hiding in the coffin, at which point he throws out a very Jim Carrey-esque wool, don't go in there, to the coffin. Um, some really, really cool things, but I was also really concerned because it was very John Wick in the action, like yeah. it was very gun-heavy, stylized, um, I can't remember the name of that fighting with guns thing, but if I think really hard, it will come up here, look, magic. Um, yeah, there was a lot of that thrown in, and I was like, I hope this isn't the whole film's going to be played as a serious, violent action, but it was a Deadpool movie. That's, uh, you get what you get. So just on that, comparing one and two, the budget is quite different for this film. Is this sitting around the 200 and 200 mil? 
Yeah, compared yep. to say a sixty mil for the yeah. first one. But, yeah. I, but I, no, I think the shock value of seeing the first one, like yeah, really, it really I, I agree. me more. Budget aside, like the, the, the yeah, action but, sequences yeah. here, oh, they, could, they could do but, three or four times. But that, the but that scale. car scene in the first one, where oh, that's where they spent all the money. Thing, isn't that, it? that 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 was you, they didn't do anything like that in this one, no. which which was disappointing. Like I was waiting for bits where. Um, I think it was in that truck where he could have done something, you know, a bit more a bit to more, the humour of that. Scene, yeah, a bit more that, yeah. like to the domino aspect, yeah. but him, you know, flying through the air in slow mo, yeah. pulling pulling someone's undies up yeah, and yeah. giving them a wedgie, and you know, putting a um, cigarette lighter, uh, putting a there was a, a bit of that though in in the mouth and saying, you know, for the first time ever, don't thing. swallow. You know, like, <laughs> did, you, did you guys like because there's a lot of talk about how it's like the biggest first r-rated action like comic book type thing i think a lot of love gets missed for the original kick-ass film because yep. yeah, there's actually definitely. a scene where deadpool yeah. is chasing a mobster boss that's gone into a panic room at which we're treated to basically a long cut of deadpool coming through the factory killing everyone in different ways picking up chainsaws and stuff and to me, I was like, you know what? Mm. That is so very close to being a ripoff of the Big Daddy scene yeah. from Kick Ass, yeah. where he yeah, basically, comes in. yeah, yeah. Cool. And that's what I thought. I'm like, that's almost an an acknowledgement because yeah. it's filmed the same, same setting and everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that mm. point. I like, I like, I thought the music in this film. You mentioned we mentioned the Celine Dion <laughs> song. Um, Tina Turner. I did turn back time. Tina Turner. Yeah. There oh, was, no, that was sure. sure. I didn't like uh, because I don't like ACDC, which is no, I could see, get I deported. That, for I that. thought it was well used. That was well, well, yeah, well, yeah. I guess um, yeah. with the original, they had um, Salt and Pepper, and they used it in yeah. the film as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This time, I'm like, well, obviously it's going to be LL Cool J, but they <laughs> didn't even make the cut. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you sat through the full credits, but you were yeah. treated to a acapella. Um, juggernaut theme. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a in, a, a in, reprise of the team head kick Deadpool rap for the second film yeah. in the credits, which sucked. Like, because the first one was great, mm. but this one sucked. And there was a, there was what was the song that was playing? I think when the big when everything was on fire, or and I think the Juggernaut was sort of trashing Colossus, and it was like a uh, an operatic, it? and they're just going holy shit balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was Juggernaut. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> but I was just trying to think. Much similar in the way that like um, Careless Whisper or the Angel of the Morning song in the yeah. first one was used. They went back to that well in this one. I can't think of what the um, what the songs were, but there was a few songs that they they used juxtaposition really well yeah. in all of these films where. The music doesn't necessarily line up with what you're watching, but that's kind of across yeah. the board. Yeah. One thing I've noticed, have you noticed, like, after the Avengers film, all battles took took place in the sky above cities, right? Yeah. And one thing that I was kind of getting annoyed at, but they didn't stay there too long, as soon as Inception came out and they had the battle at the snow-capped ice mm. fortress, we then got treated to that in Ninja Turtles as well. Yeah, the snow. Michael Bay, the yeah. snow mountain. Snow fight. in New York. Snow in New York. Mountains but in then New York. there's mm. the falling out of the uh, out of the prison, the ice box in this yep. one where they yep. fell into the snow. I'm like, oh, please don't tell nah. me this is going to be. But they didn't. <laughs> nah. um, the scene oh, of sorry, the best bit ever. <laughs> sorry, we can't. I just thought of it. Um, was when he put the cocaine up his butt. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> <himself. laughs> and I also, I also love the callback comedy that that was by finding it in um, in his old roommate's yeah. house yeah, yeah, under yeah, the floorboard. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you saw right next to it, it said the cure for blindness. Yeah. 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 Right next to it. And I was like, that was so good. <laughs> Uh, um, sorry. sorry to cut you off. No, that's fine. I'll cut you <laughs> completely this... out of the video. <laughs> I was just thinking, this film is so self-aware and there's a lot yeah. of meta humour as we talked yeah. about. For me, it took me out of an immersive cinema experience yeah. that I would have otherwise had in, in something like an Avengers or mm. the film I saw before. It's not necessarily a bad I thing. I believe it's Avengers. Yeah. So, yeah. A Avengers. 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 <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this sort of film... Like I just thought back to things like... Um, What's it called? Leslie Nielsen. Oh, no. Uh, 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 is this yeah. sort of the equivalent of, of almost being so self-aware and, and, and mocking or having a parody of a superhuman film? No, because I think the, the, the thing that works for this is it's uh, introversion or self-awareness that it will say, this is just like in this movie, whereas yeah. Naked Gun it's was almost... Genre it was almost like Family Guy's cutaways, where it was like, yeah. here's these ideas we have, 
and they'll together. just tie Gags. them together. Yeah. Whereas this one has the cohesive story and then does the Family Guy. I, I think I think to Trent's point, you sort of expect that sort of breaking the fourth wall aspect in a in a pure comedy film like like you know the slapstick humor that's found in um, Naked Gun and stuff like that. But when you uh, splice in comic book and action. That 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 is just Takes so foreign. It well, yeah, but I mean, it's just like but then it's just you you gobsmacked. Oh my gosh! Like they can't they they can't do that, and yet they're doing it, and it, it therefore you, you're blown away because yeah. they're that like, all really it's unheard of. You know? That all really ties back to the comic books, yeah. though, because yes. there are episodes, yeah. there are comics where Deadpool goes and reads the end of the comic, <laughs> a la Spaceballs, yeah. and finds out what's going to happen and uses that to. Yeah solve the problem in the middle right. of the comic. Yep. Um, there was one comic where he basically asked the reader to rip the page with the bad guy out, <laughs> and that was yep. how he defeated the There's bad guy. There's one where so. he goes literally to Marvel Comics and goes into the editor's room and goes, I hate these fucking guys, and just shoots all <laughs> the editors of <laughs> Marvel yeah. Comics. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's very very true to the yeah. character. I am sort of stuff. quite excited for um, both... Parody porn of Domino, that would be the first thing. I'm really sceptical about an X-Force film because they're going to have to spread out the... Um, the love. The love and the... Uh, attention. Attention. And let's face it, Deadpool's not about that. Love to see Deadpool 3. Um, I did see a video where this was years... Right after the first film came out, Kevin Smith pitched an idea for a Deadpool sequel mm. and he said that he wanted to see... Vanessa basically dies and goes to hell yeah. and Deadpool uh, Deadpool has to basically follow her in a bogus journey type oh, thing wow. because he can't die yeah. he actually would have to make a deal with the devil or something and go back yeah, yeah. so it had a real spawn meets uh, Bill and yeah, Ted's yeah, bogus journey cool. thing and I loved it and I almost felt they touched on it themically in Deadpool 2. Well, yeah. it, traditionally, if you look at the character of Domino, and this is like her early, early days... Deadpool, I will look at the character will, I'm sure Domino. you will. She was actually Deadpool's girlfriend. Like, that mm, was... that was true. Domino was her superhero alter ego. Yeah. But it, and but so, it was interesting. I don't know much about the comics, so please yell out if I'm wrong. But it doesn't... You're wrong, out! <laughs> um, but doesn't do uh, Deadpool uh, fascination with Lady Death or something? Or, which uh, is uh, which... Thanos' girlfriend as well. Right. Yeah. So, then, so then he goes... Well, he has to quest. die. That's why he's yeah. trying to yeah, die. He, so yeah. he goes on this quest to, to get people to kill him. In, and that includes, you know, brings characters in like the Hulk and stuff because he just keeps prodding the Hulk to get yeah. him angry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, to, to kill him so that he goes to meet Lady Death or whatever her name is. Mm. Um, and uh, so he can see her. So, yeah. One yeah. thing I found, I know it's an important part of the story. One thing I found a little bit unnecessary. And no, no, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I find it a little. This is going to make you into a prick. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I found it a little bit unnecessary the cancer suffering when Deadpool's powers stop working. But one thing I will say that was really good was uh, a few of the trailers before the film were actually uh, different cancer things locally and stuff. Okay. Oh, and there was so, a pink Deadpool yeah, suit and stuff. Well, yeah. there, there was actually like a some local service groups and stuff and yeah. different things for cancer patients oh, right. were part of the advertising at the session I went to. And yeah. I was like, that's a pretty cool tie because yeah, the yeah. first one was very much that. So, mm. um, cool little uh, heartfelt moments in throughout this one, including when they're talking about naming it, uh, Vanessa and Deadpool yeah. talking about naming each other, he mentions maybe naming, naming it Connor, which is after the the young fellow that passed away after seeing the first one, mm. the super oh, yeah. fan. Cool. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty fucking classy. Um, but overall, this film is just, it's everything you'd want from a Marvel film in 2018. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of all you're going to get other than Ant-Man, because... I don't think Marvel have released the film this year. Uh, yeah. Marvel. Uh, the, nothing that uh, I can Black, think of. Oh no, Black you know what they did? Black they Black said Black. we're not going to make any movies for a bit because we're going to rename Eddie Had Stadium because yeah. that news <laughs> up to that. Marvel yeah. Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> They're opening yeah. a Marvel <laughs> store though. The funny yeah, thing yeah, was, yes. I bet you that is the most that any of us nerds have ever listened to a sports story yeah. on the news. <laughs> and they said, oh, and there will be a dedicated Marvel store yeah. at Eddie. Really? It's like, oh, <laughs> oh my, go there. Time to go to football. Footy. <laughs> Alright guys, so the final question today is what would you give this film out of 19? Look, I'm going to give it a... Uh, I'm going to go 16 out of 19. I thought there was a few things we talked touched on earlier that could be, could be improved, but uh, yeah, still pretty good. 
15 shit balls out of 19. Ooh. Ben? Uh, 14. 14, 14 dominoes. And I'm going to give it an 18 just because the last word he said is domino. And my Google history tells me that I should. So you can check these guys out with their awesome Toy Power podcast. Massive sorry going out to Darren who couldn't be here today. But yeah, if you head along to the link that's going to be diagonal across Trent's face right here, <laughs> then that's where you can check out Toy Power podcast. Guys, thank you so much for being part of it. Thanks for having us, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe and send nudes. And also you can check out the live radio version on Wow FM of Dave's Video Graveyard. Simply by heading at 8 p.m. Australian Central Standard Time on a Monday night to wowfm.org/listen. This has been Dave's Video Graveyard.